think it is a growing, growing problem. This notion of uh, you know consumers uh, making up their minds in the first five or ten seconds about whether a particular marketplace is going to meet their needs or not. They, the access to uh, opportunities are just a click away, right? So the challenge for customers that we work with is how do you transform entirely the onboarding process, where you know after you've paid excessive amounts of money to acquire the customer and the land on your site, how are you building a very personalized human experience where they go from you know browsing to register, register to first transaction, first transaction to how many ever listings it might take to become a loyal user. We spend an inordinate amount of time building software and applying machine learning to solve those problems where that first interaction is most meaningful. Um, examples would be things like, you know, if you are in the ride sharing business um, and someone orders a car, do you really put, you know, it's the first time they've used your service, do you really put the first car that's closest to them in front of them or do you best find the best driver, maybe 30 seconds away, but you want that experience to be really good. So it is a race to the bottom. It is getting very transactional, but the best marketplaces are fighting that and actually really want that. The thing we wake up to solve every morning is how do we let every single marketplace customer um, treat every consumer, every buyer and seller, not as a cohort or as a segment, but as an audience of one. And we strive to solve that problem every single day across the entire life, life cycle of every one of those sellers and every one of those buyers. You know, the data science investments that we make at Kahuna help us to really understand every single nuance and every single point in that life cycle or journey where either a seller or a buyer is most likely to drop off or get disengaged or go dormant. And whether we help them write the best subject line to hook in the right sellers or to appeal to them in the most profitable way, or we help them um, figure out how to put their products in front of the buyers who most likely will care about what they're selling. We believe that machine learning and artificial intelligence has, for the first time, allowed modern marketplaces to be able to, in the most human and real ways, deal with every single constituency that they deal with as an individual. You know, the most modern marketplaces have employed that kind of technology today, and they've been able to fend off the Amazons and the Ubers and the Open Tables and the Yelps and their markets and really, really build very meaningful uh, sustainable systems. I am absolutely blown away by the heart and fight in these companies that have come to this plan. Nobody here is trying to be a me too. Nobody here is trying to do incremental stuff. I've had CEOs come up to me in the last 24 hours and talk about how do we, we, we're number one in our country, that's not good enough, we want to take over the whole, whole continent, where do we go next, how can we work together? And I have to admit that leaving Miami and going back home, that is probably the most inspiring thing for me to go and take back to our teams, because if we can play a part in helping these companies do that kind of stuff, what a better, you couldn't find a better way to make it. So I think that's, I think that's one. That's a good news. I think, I think the, the new thing that I learned, which I don't think I had enough of an appreciation for um, before the event, is this looming threat um, of Facebook marketplaces. And I feel like to some degree it's real and to some degree it's unreal. Um, I don't think people, uh, I don't think they're really double clicking and understanding how it can be a source of lead gen for them. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of preemptive skepticism around it, but I can respect it. Having said all that, I do believe that the next 12 months is going to be subsumed in companies understanding what is their Facebook coexistence strategy. Is it, do I compete with them? Do I partner with them? I can tell you this, some of the most iconic marketplaces who at this point are not competing with them have a really, really strong game plan to use one-to-one -one personalization and out compete them because of the value that they can provide. However, I do think it's a bit blown over. I think they need to understand a little more. There are opportunities to drive significant lead generation from uh, from social platforms. So I'll take a deep breath and, uh, and give it a fair. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think we're really blessed in this space. I'd love to claim genius and say we had this all figured out, but I think looking back, 
One of the best things that Kahuna did uh, was, uh, you know, we spent the first five quarters during the life of this company back, you know, six years ago, honestly doing nothing but spending in spending five quarters building technology that allows us to let our customers, which are marketplaces, be able to understand consumers' preferences and needs in under four seconds. So the speed and architect, the architecture of this platform, the speed at which we can understand and listen to new gestures, you look at a new item, you never looked at a blue shirt, now you're looking at blue shirts, you, you like SUVs, you're suddenly looking at compact cars, um, you're looking at real estate, you, you, you bought houses, you're looking at condos, you, you search on your iPad, you, look, you don't look on your iPhone, you look on Thursdays, you research on Thursdays, you buy on Sundays. Kahuna can capture every single one of these gestures in under four seconds. And then apply machine learning to say, okay, based on dynamic inventory in a marketplace, because it's dynamic, every second is inventory is changing, buyers are changing, sellers are changing, because of the speed at which Kahuna can consume information, we can uh, then apply machine learning, which we spend the next six years building out, um, uh, where these artificial intelligence models will start to connect the right buyer at the right time, and exactly at that point where need and availability uh, meet. So, you know, we've built a whole slew of marketplace features on top of this. But if you ask me the thing that, you know, you can build a great building and you can put great paint on it and build some windows on it. But if the foundation wasn't set, you can't go and recreate the foundation. We got really lucky that our, uh, our founders spent an inordinate amount of time getting that right. And it's, uh, it's helping some of our most iconic customers today uh, be number one in their markets from Singapore to Sao Paulo. So we're, we're, pretty, uh, we're pretty blessed. Like any CEO does, um, you look at, you know, what's the product we're building, what's the market we're going after, what's the team that we have, what's the culture, and you start to sort of get the, you know, make sure that you have the right DNA in place that is much more resilient and can outlast, you know, blow by blow battles that we all have as CEOs. I think in hindsight, um, you know, as CEOs, we tend to pick up these problems in a sequential way and say, I'll solve this and I'll get to that and I'll get to this. I think, I think I'd do two things differently. I think one is I would have done a little more parallel tracking and taken the pain, sort of, a, you know, shortened the, the time frame within which we, we endured that pain and picked up a few more things. I think it turned out okay and we're blessed and we're lucky and the company's doing fantastically well. But I would say that if I had to, I would switch the order of stuff. I think when you're coming in as a new CEO, um, you know, it feels like your gut reaction often is I got to change the strategy to figure out where we sell and who we sell to. I would have spent maybe more time on getting our culture, you know, in the right place first. We did it, but I think if I'd done that first, all the subsequent steps would have moved faster. So, uh, you know, I think, um, I think one of the companies that's absolutely blown me away and actually inspired me is a customer of ours by the name of Carousel. Carousel is the leading uh, classified marketplace uh, in Southeast Asia, based out of Singapore, and they lead markets like Singapore and Hong Kong that are playing the, in, the, in the global region. And um, the thing that is, you know, that that inspires us and me to do to go back and do more for them. Um, is, you know, when I talked to their uh, their head of digital marketing, he made two statements, and he's made many statements of the way, but he's made two that, you know, made me just think of the enormity of the task that uh, is in front of them and by extension in front of us as a partner. And that is that, um, you know, for most of us as consumers, we think about classifies as a place where, hey, you know, I've got this old couch and I need to get rid of it and let me just put a photo of it up. Or I got an old car and let me put a photo up. And, that, and, and classifieds for most of us has been about that. You know, I've got things that I need to get rid of. What I am absolutely blown away and admired, and I admire about these guys, is they changed the very sort of idea of classifieds in our minds. And they've most successfully been able to turn it into a lifestyle. And what I mean by that is, is, People on Carousel don't come there where they just have, you know, hey, I need some cash and I got those four things I'm not doing anything with. They use it as a way to actively buy and sell stuff so that they're freeing up cash. And if they bought something new and they can sell it in six months and they can sell it for 50%, they take that 50% and they buy something else. And, they f and it's almost a way to experience more different things in a short span of time than most of us would normally or otherwise afford. So they've 
it's become very germane to how people work. And they, when they acquire something through these classifieds, the idea is I'm going to keep it for three months and I want another one. And I'm going to buy a gadget and I'm going to buy this and like that. And it's almost like a pool of money has been set aside that just gets rotated to build experiences. And I, it is, it is a very, very inspiring way for people like us who've grown up in the worlds of Craigslist where, you know, you go there once in a while. These guys have actually redefined the place of classifieds in our daily lives, not the one-off once in five years. Um, you know, I got to get rid of that uh, piece of furniture. I, I, it, it, it just inspires us to be able to sort of help them build a brand like that. And I, uh, and I, uh, I'm a privileged to work with companies like that.